Hello and welcome along to another episode of this Cricket 19 career with me Daniel. It's episode 30 and today we're back to carry on where we left off. We're in the final of the Royal London One Day Cup and we've started absolutely brilliantly but it's been a very difficult start for our team. Of course the fact we're here for part 2 of our innings suggests it's been a pretty long one but if you haven't caught up with the first part yet then please do click on the i above to catch up with the previous episode where we start started this innings as we bat first in the final to see how Yorkshire have got on as a whole. We will go and have a look at a scorecard in a second but I do want to give you a chance to go and catch up so in the meantime a massive thank you to everyone that continues to support the series. I really do appreciate it. I'm absolutely loving Cricket 19 and I hope you're enjoying the content too and of course we've got FM20 just round the corner with announcements and plans for that on the way. So let's not hold it up any longer. Let's go and have a look at the scorecard for this first innings. We left the action as we just reached 100 after 16.4 overs. And remarkably, 61 of those runs came from us directly, of just 50 balls in the end. Gary Balance, our opening partner, got out for two. And then the wickets were falling like skittles. Joe Root, the only one reaching double figures, but no one seeing more than 16 deliveries. So we really have got a lot of responsibility on our shoulders to try and make sure we stay in for a while and as a result we've probably got to be a little less aggressive now as we've only really got two recognised batsmen left Adam Lyth who's in alongside us now and then Johnny Bairstow the England wicket keeper who of course will follow afterwards then we're down to the bowlers and at that point we'll probably have to hog the strike and unfortunately then we do have to go for more aggressive strokes something we're not naturally great at we like rotating the strike and running ones and twos but unfortunately our partners aren't staying in at the other end which is making it very hard to do that. Of course we're batting first and we've only seen three bowlers so far so we may get a couple of part timers in the middle which could potentially help us out but as it stands after a third of our innings we're not in particularly great shape as we've got to try and set a decent score for Northamptonshire otherwise they're going to win this final at a canter. But let's go and get back into the first ball of this episode. Of course we're facing our first ball of the over but it's the fifth one after life saw off the first four and we'll be back in a moment to see off the spinner and then hopefully add some runs against the pace bowlers. First ball of the episode against the spinner then, as the ground continues to fill up, the space on the leg side if we can get a quick single, just to reintegrate ourselves back into the innings, we want to make sure it's as seamless as possible and keep rotating the strike as well. We've got a 3D the left arm seamer back in at the other end as Life managed to just see off a dot ball and it's a short one that we tried to hook away to start with but we've not made a good job of that one. It's gone straight through to the keeper and it was a half chance for the bowl inside. Northamptonshire trying to take our wicket. They'd probably be confident they could win after that point. We're the only one really holding them up as we continue to be cautious on the offside and again it's another half chance for the bowler and he's going to be a little disappointed he has got us yet. He's coming in again for his third ball now and we've got to try and see him off a bit better. This time we just defend it to make sure we show our competence. Fourth ball then, we're just waiting for one to drift. This is a short one which we can pull to the leg side. In the end it's more of a glance, but it does go through for a single. And hopefully Adam Life can add a run or two, so it doesn't end up being a pour over. It is going to slow down a little bit now, as the international bowler Tim Southey's back in. He's coming over the wicket though, and that's our favoured option. Adam Life did manage to get two more runs. As we rush away a single there, is it going to beat the fielder? It does, it goes for four. What a fantastic shot that was. Very close to the fielder in the deep, but it was hit so powerfully he couldn't get there. That's made up for the previous one. Four off the first ball here. We've got another one on the leg side. This time it's right at the fielder though. Just glanced away and a little bit finer. Five off the first two balls. Adam Life back on strike at the other end. Look what's happened now, we're back for the last ball of the over. Tim Salvi has bowled Adam Life, saw off a couple of dot balls and didn't add a run. And now we're joined by Johnny Bairstow who's on one, and it is just us two against the rest now. A short ball which we can't take any risks against, and with 19 overs gone, it's 110 for 5. Two more recognised batsmen left, and then we're in a world of trouble. 20 overs gone then, Johnny Bairstow seen off a maiden at the other end, Tim Salvey's back on strike to us now, we hit one to the leg side, it's pretty well struck, 
And it's only going to be a single to start the over. I'm not sure if it's a good sign that Bairstow's going slowly, but as long as he stays in alongside us, we'll have a chance later in the innings. It's exactly the same again. He's seen off five dot balls, yet to score another run since his first delivery. That's 11 dots in a row for him as we fish at one outside off stump. A 3D in for his second ball. This one's closer to the stumps. And we just tickle it to the leg side. We were hoping we'd be able to nick two. But the fielder gets around very quickly. So just a single for Bearstow now. He's managed to add two more runs this time. And we're back on strike for the final ball. We don't want to hit anything outside off stump. Still too early in the innings to take a risk. So we just defend this one and the fielder picks up. And it's another dot ball to finish the over. 115 for five now York but the scoring rate doesn't really matter for the next five. We've got the spinner back in and Johnny Bairstow seen off another maiden. This is getting really silly now. How can we have so many in a row? As we get a single to the leg side to start, I'm almost scared of doing that now because I fear that we won't score any more runs in the over. Rotating the strike should be very simple. It's something we're making look easy on 71 now and why can't Bairstow do it at the other end? Again, he's just seen off the rest of a maiden. This is absolutely ridiculous. It's cotton in after one over. Obviously a maiden to Bairstow, but we thundered one to the leg side again, and it just beats the chasing fielder to the boundary. Four runs to start, and we've got to do it ourselves now, as everyone else is just being silly. No idea why Bairstow's not playing a shot. There's fear, and then there's just being ridiculous. It's a single off the second ball, so five off the over, and Johnny Bairstow's got four deliveries to score. Back to face the spinner as Johnny Bairstow added six more. Finally, we're getting some support at the other end. And that makes me more confident to hit the single off the spinner. I can't afford to take the risk against him. But getting one should be enough at this stage. Hopefully, Bairstow adds another. He does with the very next ball. And now we're back on strike for the third delivery. With the same gaps to the leg side field. He's bowling it perfectly for us there. So we're able to get a single every time. And we've just got to get Bairstow to do the same and then we can explode in the last 10 overs. I think he's finally learning as he does it again. So two balls left in the over. We really don't want one outside off, but it's enough that we can get it round to the leg side, and it's five singles off the over so far. He doesn't, I'm afraid. It was a dot ball to finish, and now we've got Cotton the seamer coming in. We're trying to go for four in the gaps, and that's an absolutely fantastic shot. Not quite as fine as our previous ones, almost between square and mid wicket, and we're able to get four off the first ball of the over, which takes us on to 83. Could it be a century in the final for us, as we've scored nearly two thirds of Yorkshire's runs? This one's just going to be a single, again five off the first two balls, and hopefully. Hopefully Bearstow can get going now as he scored a few runs in the last two overs. Just a single from Bearstow, but that's enough for us. As long as he keeps rotating the strike, we should be able to compete. And we get another single there in exactly the same fashion to the leg side. And a seven off the over in four balls as we start to pick up the run rate. It looks like Johnny Bearstow knows what we need as well as I do too. So we're going to keep trying to add a few runs as we edge towards 150. Don't forget in a final, it's a little bit nervy as one's gone straight across us there. So we don't have to worry so much about the perfect score we're not necessarily going to get 300 250 could be enough as we saw in the World Cup final 300's a bit of a rare thing but a fantastic shot there for a full delivery and we managed to get it for four on the leg side it was quite a wide delivery so I don't know how we managed it but in the end it's another four runs and we're now just 11 from our century let's see if we can back that up we've really got to think about what's the point we press the accelerator at the moment I'm pretty happy with how we're going along as we just get another single there. If one of us can find a boundary in most overs and carry on going at five or six, that'll be fine until the 40 over mark and then hopefully we're both still in at that point. It's Cotton's first ball of the over. Space on the leg side but it beats us on the off stump. A fantastic delivery and it nearly grazes the stumps but we just about get away with it. Ten away from the century, we don't want to throw it away now and we need to stay in for Yorkshire's sake so there's some reasons to do well, both for personal pride and club team. Johnny Bairstow started scoring at the other end as we face a new bowler now. A left arm medium pacer, he's bowling outside off, but we go down the ground to straight off. 
and that's going to be a single to start. Johnny Bairstow can hopefully take advantage here. I'm sure he's more comfortable with the medium pace. He's given a single on the first one though, so he's put a straight back on strike. And it's a short ball from the delivery. Oh, we edged it and it nearly went to the keeper. Just beat him on the leg side. And in the end we get through for a single. We nearly lost our wicket there. We're back for his second over. Best, I obviously saw off a few balls. And we've gone straight down the ground again. This is going to beat the fielder, you know. A boundary straight. It's a little bit of a difference to the leg side. Which is something different for a shot selection. But we feel fairly confident against the lower pace. To be able to produce such shots. He's hopefully going to drift to the leg side now. He doesn't, so we go down the ground again. But this one's just going to be a single. Best though back on strike. And we're edging closer to 100. Johnny Bairstow's put us back on strike. He obviously wants us to get these two runs. Can we get to 100? There's one of them to the leg side. We move on to 99 off 81. Bairstow will face the strike again now. And we may be back soon to get a 100th run. We're back on strike for the start of Cotton's over then. We're on 99. Just one run needed. And there it is. Might even be two in the end. We might even be four now. The fielder's not got there. It's gone all the way to the boundary. We've produced a century in the final of the One Day Cup. What a time to show our form for Yorkshire. Surely England selectors will be taking a look at this as we're performing on the biggest stage possible. We're not quite the finished article yet, but this has been a fantastic innings when our side needed it most. The England skipper fell away, experienced batsmen falling like skittles, and we've turned up and we're now on 104, with Johnny Bairstow going strong at the other end. Two balls left in the over, Cotton coming in again, short ball really wide outside leg, and he's going to have to bowl that one again. Let's see if he does any better after a wide last time round. Again, it's a short one outside leg. I'm not sure what's going on here. He's either scared of bowling it straight at us, or he's just lost his line completely. Third time lucky, perhaps, for Cotton. In he comes again. It is a short one. Not quite as wide this time, but we do manage to work a single still. And now Johnny Bairstow will face the last ball. We're back for the start of the next over and we have a big problem. We're joined by Fisher in the middle, which means Johnny Bairstow got out off that last ball of the over. And now with 17 overs left, it's us and the spinners, so can we really play for singles? I'm not quite sure what the approach will be here, but we'll do a couple more overs for now. I think we have to trust Fisher because there are still 17 overs left. That we play outside off stump on that one. That is the difference at this stage. Because we don't have batsmen at the other end, we have to play outside off and try and maximise our run scoring opportunities. If we don't get to 50 overs, at least we can perhaps score some runs quickly. As Fisher's got five at the other end and we're now back for the last ball. We sensibly hit a single so we retain the strike and we'll face the first delivery of the next over. It's Cotton coming in again, who of course took that wicket of Bairstow. A crucial one for his side, Northamptonshire. And I think we found a gap here where we can get to. It's not the easiest one, but we're going to charge back. And we just about made it. A direct hit and we would have been gone. But in the end, we move on to 109. Let's see if we can hit that a bit more cleanly next time. And just try and get four runs to start. Another wide one from Fisher helps. He continues to bowl wide. And it's Cotton, of course, rather than Fisher bowling. And thankfully, he's giving us three runs. Here he comes again then. We expect the short ball again. Very wide, so we just get out the way. We almost start as if we're going to play the pull shot. And then just duck to the left if it's wide. Third time lucky yet again. This one's a fuller delivery, but again it's on leg stump, so it's going to be at least one. Do we try and run two again? The field is a lot closer. It's going to be tight, but we just about make it. The throw wasn't great, and the wicket keeper had to wait, and thankfully that saved our wicket. Now the third ball of the over, we're on to 111, is a full delivery outside leg, and we managed to hit a quick single. Almost closing in on 200, but now Fisher's back on strike. Single from Fisher to bring us on strike. Cotton with a fuller delivery this time. We've not connected well at all. But another single and now just one ball for Fisher to see off. And then we should start the next over on strike. 
We're not. Fisher saw off another over, and he's managed to get to 15 runs now, looking fairly competent at the other end, as we Fisher a really short ball, and again we nearly got an edge on it, but in the end it results in just a wide. So thankfully we got away with that one, as Cotton comes in again. He's given us so many free runs, and we're very grateful, and this time we just get a single to leg side, as I'm starting to feel more confident with Fisher at the other end. Lots of dot balls in that over for Fisher. Maybe he's losing some of his early confidence now. We play at a short one and it's a really poor shot. But again it drops safe and we get a single. We've got away with one there as we move on to 208. But as we say that Fisher's got on to 19. Must have found a boundary from somewhere. And again we've got a ball we can find the leg side with. And it's just going to be a single for this one. Just one ball left in the over to come. So hopefully he'll be able to get a shot off it. Just one over left before the final power play. Fisher's still going strong at the other end. I know it seems a little bit strange, but I want to show you as much as possible from this innings. Even some of the boring singles and dot balls. It's such a big occasion for us that I feel it's only fair you see how we've built our innings rather than just seeing the big moments. But I think we've got to start to go big soon. Though this one's good to go down the ground. So just to single off this one to bring Fisher back on strike. For the final 10 overs, we are are going to come back in the next episode as well as showing your highlights from the bowling just because I want to go all out attack and we could get out very quickly and it is a rare occasion where seeing the bowling is important as we move to the 40 over mark so let's go and have a look at the situation of the game and where we're going to be in the third and final part of this saga as we come back for the final episode from the final so let's go and have a look at the scorecard and see where we are after the 40 over mark from a personal point of view it's been fantastic, 117 off 95 balls now, we've faced over 15 overs worth of this innings and we've managed to do fantastically off it, but bar our last two partners Johnny Bearstow and now Fisher, we've not really had much support with the others getting out for less than 15. That includes the England captain Joe Root, the former England opener Adam Life and the likes of David Willey and Gary Balance as well, so it is a little bit disappointing that most of these big names haven't performed on the big stage but we've got a big 10 overs to come and we are going to have to start to be more aggressive maybe even bring out the sweet shot to the spinner to see if we can produce something special we've got to start dealing in boundaries at this stage it's a little bit of a catch-22 potentially if we got six and over in singles 274 would be enough but of course we're relying on our partners doing that at the other end and we don't want to leave ourselves needing boundaries off the last over. We need to post a competitive score and I think the only way to do that is attack. So if you did enjoy this fantastic continued innings and our performance on the biggest stage in the Royal London One Day Cup Final, please do put a thumbs up on the video. I hope you continue to enjoy the content from this series as it continues every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday at midday. And of course we'll be back next time on Saturday for a really important one as we conclude this three-part saga in the Cup Final. Can we edge our side to a competitive score with an explosion of big shots in the last 10 overs? and then will we be able to help defend it as we'll almost certainly be given the ball for our 10 overs can we be economical on the big stage too and maybe even walk away with a man of the match award as well as the trophy for the Royal London One Day Cup let me know in the comments how you think we should approach the last 10 overs. I think we've got to go all out attack. But of course you may think that the singles are enough. So let me know if you think I should trust my partners. Or do we do the same until Fisher gets out. And then just go for it when we're joined by the tail enders. Subscribe to the channel for three episodes a week from this Cricket 19 career. As we mentioned a moment ago. As well as daily FM19 content. Our one club story with Talkie United continues every Sunday to Thursday at 4.30. And then over the next few Saturdays at the same time, we'll have announcements and plans for FM20 as we react to some of the headline features and of course show you the teams we'll be managing. Then there's also weekly career mode content from Snooker19, that's every Friday at half four. We're in the final event of the series in that one and it's the big season ending world championships. So can we get over the line on the biggest stage there? Join me over the next few Fridays to find out. We'll have action from every round in that one as we make Make our way towards the final but a massive thanks for watching this one as always and you'll continue to support with the series i really do appreciate it and i hope you'll join me next time as well as we conclude our royal london one day cup final